Hello, everybody. This episode, I am showing how to prepare a commercial for a broadcast station. If you're preparing a commercial to go to a broadcast station, there's some steps that you usually take. And uh, oftentimes, if you're sending a 30-second spot to a broadcast station, you will want to be aware of their policies, of their requirements for delivery. For delivery, This is one, one station's requirements right here, but you'll want to check with them and then adapt those settings as per their requirements. Some of them require just you upload a commercial, and some of them require that you put bars and tone. Most professional places will require that you put bars and tone and a countdown leader and a title at the beginning of your commercial and have it time coded. So that's what we're really going to be going over today is how to prep it for a station that want, that requires bars and tone, countdown leader, and a title. So I have a little sheet here that kind of shows the the final stages. Once the commercial is completely finished and it's been all locked, if you have the, the sound mix, the color correction, everything finished on it and you're ready for delivery, what I want you to notice over here is as we select the timeline that we're working in here that the project has been edited and color corrected and sound mixed in, Notice this timeline is 23.976, 24 frames per second drop frame, and resolution is 1920 by 1080. Now, it'll be the same if you're working in a 4K sequence and you're sending it to broadcast. Most broadcast stations require 1920 by 1080, but they usually have a frame rate of uh, that their broadcast frame rate is at 30 frames per second drop frame, 29.976, or at 60 frames per second, 59.976, I believe. So you'll have to check with the broadcast station requirements and see if they're requiring 60 frames per second or 30 frames. So at some point, this is going to have to be conformed to 30 frames per second and the resolution that's required by the station, which already matches. The three most important things that they'll be asking for is your resolution, your pixel aspect ratio, and your frame rate. So if we go back to our little thing here, what we're going to do is we are going to create a new timeline that is set at the exact settings that the broadcast station is requiring. And this one here, this is a sheet taken from a local broadcast station in Utah here, and, and uh, they're asking, asking us to set our timeline resolution at 1920 by 1080 and 2997 frames per second drop frame. So I'm going to go up to, I'm going to go down to my new item here and I'm going to create a new sequence. And there's already some DSLR settings here. If I go to 30 frames per second here, this one is a time base at drop frame 30 frames per second. I'm at 1920 by 1080 and 1.0 pixel aspect ratio. I'm going to call this for broadcast. Hit enter and there's my timeline, empty timeline, ready to go. I'm going to go back to my sheet here and look at the next thing. They are wanting us to add, before we add the commercial, they're wanting us to add 10 seconds of bars and tone. Now notice, like I said, frame rate is different from that of the original commercial. And what we're going to do is eventually put this timeline in here and it's going to convert it. You don't be, be very sure that you don't just go in here and copy and paste because it will change the timing of the commercial and there'll be little black gaps little frame gaps in between. We'll show you a better way of doing that. So first thing we're going to do is the, some stations will ask for 30, 40 seconds, some, sometimes a minute of bars and tone. This one's just asking for 10 seconds. So I'm going to go down to the little uh, new item icon here and tell it to do a new HD bars and tone. Being in the timeline that I'm in right now, it's mirroring those settings for the bars and tone, 1920 by 1080, square pixels aspect, 1.0 aspect ratio, and the 23.97 drop frame time code. I hit OK, and I've generated those bars in tone. I'm going to grab that, drop it into my source monitor, and what the bars in tone are for, the bars in tone are being generated by the editor that you're using to edit your project. In this instance, I'm using Premiere, so you'll want to generate whatever editor you're working out of. And what the bars in tone is used for is a calibration for the station that you're sending it to. They're going to use bars in tone to calibrate your colors, to get your colors to broadcast as accurately as, as possible, and to, get your, um, and to get your audio levels, and the tone is to get your audio levels playing back at the right levels as well, so it doesn't play too loud or play too quietly compared to other things that are playing around at other commercial or other projects or other movies that are playing before or after your movie. So all the levels sound about the, are mixed about the same. So somebody at home isn't having to turn their remote down and turn it back up and turn it down and turn it back up. So I'm going to press play here on the bars and tone and listen. Notice that the bars and tone, look over here at the meter, plays that annoying little noise, plays at negative 12 dB. That negative 12 dB is what we are mixing for. We are mixing our projects for negative 12 dB, which basically states that um, kind of average audio levels are hitting around negative 12. Louder things are hitting maybe around negative 6, and super loud things around negative 3. And you can even get up to super, super loud stuff, but just never touching zero. Zero is where you distort or peak. You don't ever want to touch that. But most of your audio should be mixed for around negative 12. And uh, that's it's commonly thought of as negative 12 is kind of like where dialogue on commercials and television when you're 
project doing a stereo mix will kind of average out around negative 12. Let's go to our little project here and play through some of it and kind of show, show you the audio levels. Uh, this has been mixed here and uh, look at look at the, the levels here as we play. Are you all on the panel? The music is a little bit loud, but we're seeing that the audio is hitting around negative 12, so and you'll notice that it never peaks at zero. And there we go. So that project's already been mixed. I'm going to go to our bars and tone here now. I'm going to hit home, go to the beginning. Actually, and we're going to, I'm going to land 10 seconds. I want this to be 10 seconds exactly, so I'm going to hit 10. And then this is on my numpad, by the way, not the numbers on the top of the keyboard. But if you just start typing, you don't even have to click anywhere. If you're already in the source monitor here, you click on your numpad, everything on the numpad, one, zero, and then a period. The one zero is 10 seconds, and the period is a frame holder for zero, zero for the frames. Every time you hit another, if you hit another period on the numpad, of course, it adds another two, set of two zeros. So that just became 10 minutes, zero, zero seconds, zero, zero frames. So I'm just going to be doing 10 Dot. So let's try that again. I'm just going to go to the beginning, do 10 dot, and then hit enter on my numpad, not on the main keyboard, everything on the numpad, hit enter, and it jumps 10 seconds into the clip. Now I hit O for out point, and I hit period to drop it down into my timeline. Shift 3 to go to my timeline, hit home to go to the beginning, I'm going to hit shift plus to make my column larger, the slash above the enter key on your main keyboard to kind of show the whole thing. And now as I play, our audio is calibrating there. So what they'll do is when we send this clip, when we send this commercial and it has the bars and tone at the beginning, they'll play the bars and tone at the beginning to set their audio levels to make sure that their audio, your audio levels conform, with, that your negative 12 conforms with their negative 12. If they play it into their system, here I'm going to turn this down, and it plays like this at negative 18, they'll crank up your audio so your audio plays properly. And if it's too loud, they'll turn it down and so on. And then with the colors, uh, what the, they'll usually have a broadcast or television engineer that will come in and uh, look at your commercial and make sure that the colors are calibrated, saturation levels and hue levels and everything is not off, uh, and brightness and contrast, so it really looks the way you intended it to look. I'm going to go to Window, go to Workspaces, and go to Color, and uh, what they'll do is they'll bring in your project and they will look at a vector scope and a waveform monitor and make sure that these levels are all at the contrast levels. So what happens is they change the contrast here. Because you have levels here that are at, at supposed to be at zero IRE and white levels that are supposed to be at 100 IRE. But yeah, these levels over here, the whites are set at 100 IRE and the darks are set at um, at zero IRE. And uh, the and then you got a little gray bar here that's set at I think 7.5 IRE. So uh, they'll use this these color bars here, and you'll have the colors that are at perfect saturation points on your vector scope. So they will use this to calibrate your colors. Like I said, if your contrast, I'm just going to tweak it here. If they pull it in and they realize that some of this contrast is off, they will grab their contrast and they will switch it up to get everything to meet, to get everything to look the way it should look. Same as saturation, as we drag this in, you notice these points. If the points look undersaturated like this, they will grab their saturation on their system software and boost it up till they fit into those boxes perfectly and get them and get them to where they should be. These should be at these uh, HD and uh, standard definition saturation points out here with these specific colors and specific levels for brightness. We'll meet at 100 IRE and 0 IRE perfectly and other points just to make sure that your contrast and exposure and all those things are all set. So that's what they use the bars and tone for. Okay, so once we have 10 seconds of bars and tone there, so the next thing they are asking for here is uh, the 10 second slate with the name of the commercial and running time. So I'm going to create a slate here. It's going to be go after the bars and tone. I'm going to click in my timeline, hit end, and go to the end. Let's go back to the editing here. And I'm going to go down to the generator here and click a new title. And we're just going to call this slate. Hit OK. I'm going to click in here and we're going to title this Space Paste Pill Winter Spot 30 seconds. Three seconds. And then you might also put things like a, um, if you have a commercial company or something like that. Um, I'll just call this Design Commercials. I just made that up. Let's go ahead and make this look a little neat. Center our text. Make it a little bigger so they can see it easily. And uh, some stations might have very specific requirements for how the slates look, but this... And one thing you probably actually ought to put on here is the date that this is uh, being submitted to the broadcast station. So, 2, 12, 16. So I've got the slate there. I'm going to drag that into my source monitor. And they ask for 10 seconds. So once again, I'm going to type in on the numpad, 10, 
period, enter, goes 10 seconds, hit O for out point, and shift three, make sure I'm at the end of my bars and tone, and period to drop that in. So now so far we've got our bars and tone, we've got our slight. 10 seconds of bars and tone, 10 seconds of slight. Next thing they're asking for is a countdown leader. So they want a countdown leader to counting down to the video clip. So I'm going to go new and generate a universal countdown leader. Sets it at the same resolution and frame rate as the timeline. Hit OK, hit OK, and I'm going to grab this and just drag it right in. I'm going to set my source patching to 1, put it up in my timeline here, hit period. Oops. I overwrite my slate there. I'm going to go to Shift 3, end period to drop that down in, and I've got my countdown leader here. And the way the Premiere countdown leader works in some other um, editing software will work different, but this does a two, a two pop here. It beeps on the two, and then it has one second after the two, one frame of the two, and then after the two it disappears. And it's got the rest of the two second, and then one second before it hits the commercial. And this one actually has a little cigarette burn for like three frames before it cuts away, then once it cuts away, that's where your commercial begins, exactly right there. So now to conform this commercial to this um, broadcast timeline here, that is set at 30 frames per second instead of 24 frames per second drop frame, I'm going to just grab my timeline, my entire timeline. Once again, don't double click on this. Do a copy and paste. That's the wrong way to go. It will screw it up. So I'm just going to grab the entire timeline here. That's 23.976. Drop it into my 30 frame per second timeline here and lock it right to the end here. And there you go. And this has conformed this timeline into a 30 frame per second timeline. It's duplicating some frames to make up to compensate for the missing frames there. It'll duplicate six frames per second approximately to get this to equal 30 frames per second. Now, one little issue here. Notice at the beginning of my commercial, the very first frame of my commercial is picture. The very ending frame in my commercial is picture. That can be an issue when you export this out because what the broadcast stations do is they insert, you've got 30 seconds exactly for a commercial to insert into their, their commercial slot. They usually have like two minute commercial slots or longer and they fit four commercials, four 30 second commercials or two one minute commercials that are exactly 30 seconds or exactly one minute or however long they are or 15 seconds in some instances where they can fit more. But in the instance of a 30 second commercial, it has to be 30 seconds to the frame. But this, now think about it, if you have this picture here as your first frame and there's a commercial playing before it and you get two minutes exactly, when one commercial is done playing, it cuts immediately to this commercial with image and it might look like the commercials are connected. So, and once again, you might want to check with the stations, make sure that they're okay with this, but most stations will want you to have at least two frames at the beginning of your commercial black frame and two frames at the end black frame. Notice this is 30 seconds exactly, but it starts at picture and it ends at picture at the end of the timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to do two frames of black at the beginning. That's something you have to plan for. So I'm going to take, um, and the audio is probably going to be okay, but I'm going to take two frames of my video, move it over, two frames like that. So it's two frames, one, two, and then the picture shows up. And at the end, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take two frames off. So there's a little short black blip before it cuts to the next commercial. And if the next commercial did it, there'll be four frames in between. But that way, they don't butt up against each other and look like they're one commercial. You'll have this. Watch this. Are you on? Two frames of black at the beginning and at the end before it transitions into the next commercial. I did that in the original timeline. I go back to my nested timeline here. So I've nested this timeline in here. And I've noticed it does two frames before it cuts to picture. Let's go to the end. And Two, and two frames back, you get picture. So now you get two frames of black at the end, two frames of black at the beginning. And the commercials will look like they're separate. There'll be a slight dark transition between them. Okay, so our timeline is nearly prepared here. We've got our timeline nested from this timeline. So this timeline here is now nested in this timeline and conforming to 30 frames per second, duplicating frames to make up for the missing frame rate. So next we need to do is we need to change our time code in the timeline so they know exactly where your commercial starts, 
by time code. Uh, this is broadcast time code right here. The commercial should be ending exactly on what's called one hour, zero minutes, 30 seconds, and zero, zero frames. So it's 30, se 30 seconds exactly, but your move, your commercial will start right at one hour, at the first hour. That's where they, uh, this is not one hour into it, this is the first hour is what that's considered in broadcast time. If this is two, it would be the second hour. If this is three, it would be the third hour. So this is counted as the first hour, second hour, third hour, so on. So right now, our time code at the beginning of our Space Pace commercial starts at starts at 31 seconds and two frames. <clears throat> so they want to be able to see the time code on your video clip starting at one hour exactly. So this needs to be pre-roll leading into the one hour. So this time code beforehand is going to be in the 59 minute range. 59 minute and whatever until it reaches one hour exactly. So you have to do a little bit of math and figure out what time code do I need to have this start at here? What time code do I need to have this start at over here to have this hit at one hour? Well, 31, 31 seconds and two frames backwards uh, into one hour. Let's go. I'm going to go up to this little drop down here. We're going to change the starting time code. On this little menu drop down, you go down and tell it start time. Start time, we want this to start at the very beginning. It's going to be 59 minutes. Let's see. And then minus 31 and two frames is going to be 28. And at 30 frames per second, it's going to be 28 frames. Am I right? We'll find out. I'll hit OK. And boom, I was right. So I started that at 59 minutes, 28 seconds, 28 frames. If you have longer bars in tone or longer slate or whatever, you're going to have to figure out the, the math on that. But now let's go to the beginning of the timeline and notice our new time code starts at 59 seconds, 28 seconds, and 28 frames. As we play through this, you'll see this counting down. So watch this as it gets closer. It's going to count down or it's going to count up to the one hour mark and your commercial is going to start exactly at one hour on the frame. That's how they know exactly where your commercial starts. Here it goes. Are you on? So it starts exactly at one hour and one hour and 30 seconds in is the end of your commercial. And there you go. And that's really all you have to do to get this ready. Uh, but now you're going to have to export this out uh, based on their requirements. This station is asking. They like the H.264. They say YouTube HD is a great setting. They're very, very vague on this. Some people will be very, very specific and say this has to be H.264. This has to be uh, 30 megabits per second. This has to be this frame rate. It has to be, you know, and, and this they're just saying YouTube settings because they know we're using Premiere, so, <clears throat> which is already set for H.264 and uh, the proper encoding rate, which is around 16 megabits per second. So they're good, they're good with that. I think they end up re-encoding this to the, their own codec, but they use your time code to figure out exactly where your commercials starts. And they use the bars and tone at the beginning to adjust colors and sound to make sure they're accurate as possible. So we're going to export this out. I'm going to hit Control M. And some places will even send you, if you're working in Premiere or Avid or Final Cut, they'll send you, they'll say, here's your export file. Here's your export file settings. They'll give it to you. And you just uh, you can actually go to Premiere here. And you can import a preset and choose their preset. It's a little teeny file. You import their preset and export it out as that preset. And it's very easy. They make it easy for you. So right now, I'm just going to do, I'm going to have H.264. I'm going to pull this down. Go down to the YouTube settings at the bottom, 1080 HD. Matching the frame rates are 29.97, 1920 by 1080, pixel aspect ratio 1.0. We are set. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to export this out. Let's go to the desktop. And I'm going to call this space paste. Space Pace Broadcast. Save that. And I'm going to export this out. OK. And once that's finished exporting out, I'm going to come back. And we're going to import this clip and take a look at it, what the finished product looks like. Now that, that is exported out, I'm going to import the video that I exported out here. And just look at the time code, make sure it all looks good. So this is the file that we'll be delivering here. But I just imported it into Premiere to look at the time code. I'm going to drop it into my uh, source window up here and look through it. 10 seconds of bars and tone, 10 seconds of the slate, and notice Are you all the movie starts exactly at one hour. So perfect. And it ends at one hour and 30 seconds. Okay. And then most stations will have an upload site that you upload to their server. 
Uh, they'll give you like password information all that stuff but there's my mp4 that i upload to it and they also usually have naming conventions as well so you just have to kind of pay attention to all that they're very very tedious about those things as well so you got to make sure you follow all their rules and all their little uh all, all the protocols on on how to get these things uh finished and, and uploaded all right here at the end i'm just going to play this actual commercial that we shot so you can take a look at it and uh, if you have any questions post them and thanks for watching all on the pill. You need to get on the pill. Hey, have you heard about the pill? Space Paste. Perfect toothpaste on the go. For fresh breath and clean teeth, just chew, swish, and fresh. Are you on the pill?